What's up everyone, back for another Who Done It beer review. And today's beer comes courtesy of a very good friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Steven. So huge thanks to him for this beer in the description box. I'll post a link to the beer mail video I did that contains all the goodies that Steven hooked me up with. And it's been a, a very long time since I have posted a solo Who Done It beer review. Over the past year, I've posted, I think, four different group Who Done It beer reviews with some fellow uh, beer tubing friends. But the last solo Who Done It beer review I posted was actually over a year ago. I posted it on March 9th of 2022. So I thought it was time to get back on the saddle. I have five Who Done It beers in my fr uh, fridge. Well, four now because this is the fifth one, courtesy of Steven aka the resource so i'm going to try to post one per week for the next five weeks we'll see how it goes but i'm going to try to post them on wednesday instead of western new york wednesday and uh see how i do so yeah it's been quite a while and i'm ready for it so if you are new to the channel you might not know what who done a beer reviews are but they are essentially blind slash mystery beer reviews where somebody will wrap up and conceal a beer like Steven did with this one. Then they will either give or send me a said beer and I'll review it like I do any other beer on my channel with the lone exception being, of course, I have no idea what the beer is. So at the end of the review, I try to guess the beer style and it's ABV. And if I'm feeling confident enough and this is rare, I'll try to guess the beer exactly. Doesn't happen really at all, but I've done it a couple times. And then I will finally rate the beer and reveal it to both you and myself. Now, what do we know about this beer specifically right here? Well, it was sent to me by Stephen, as I mentioned, AK, the resource. He resides in the state of Connecticut. And this seems to be in a 12 fluid ounce can. I also know that this beer is at least nine months old because Stephen sent this to me back in late June of 2022. So this is at least nine months old and probably older than that, I would guess at least, at least 10 months old, I'd probably say. But yeah, that's all I know about it. Now, the uh, packaging is just, I mean, it's been in my fridge for about nine months now. And when Steven sent to me, this, uh, if you can see the tape like curls around, luckily it did not reveal anything up here because if so, I just would have reviewed it normally or just drank the beer. But I have no idea what this is because uh, the tape actually held on. And uh, yeah, we're going to review it and see how it goes. Hopefully this isn't a huge beer. I'm not really in the mood for a huge beer, but you never know what mystery beers or whodunits or whatever you want to call them. So we're going to crack this one open, uh, get it into the glass, and uh, hopefully you guys give me a little leeway because it's been over a year since I've done a solo um, whodunit beer review. So I have no idea what to expect. I'm probably going to butcher this quite, quite badly. So, okay. So this is as light as can be. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we're going to be okay here because this is looking like something that probably isn't a big ABV beer. So we'll just throw this over here like that. I, you know, I mean, what to expect. So what does that look like? Well, it doesn't have pure clarity to it. I can see the shadow of my hand. Uh, so it's not like a lager if it is like an unfiltered lager. You hold it up to the uh, lights here. Yeah, it has this beautiful like honey golden color, a little bit of orange in there. Again, very fine particulates. So it's unfiltered. Has about a finger of an off-white, super frothy looking head. Is there any, yeah, there's some decent alcohol. Like maybe this is bigger than I anticipated. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, let's get a nose. Oh, I don't know. Okay. To me, this smells like a straight up Belgian Trapel. It smells like some kind of Belgian beer. Could be a Belgian Strong Pale. Could be a Belgian Trapel. I'm also, I thought I was getting maybe a little bit of like a, like a wine barrel or something that's like a drying barrel. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of that Belgian yeast ester. There's like clove. There's a little bit of a coriander. There's pear. There's, there's a lot of fruity notes, apricot. But to me, this definitely has a Belgian funk kind of uh, feel to it. Now, this could be, and one of the beers that Steven sent me uh, when I did a, I think it might have been the actual last one I did was like a Belgian farmhouse or Saison. It could be that too. It's definitely, because it's a lighter colored beer, it's giving me those, you know, light Belgian, light colored Belgian vibes, a tripel, um, you know, a strong pale, a pale ale, uh, again, a, a farmhouse. It's not really giving me a vit beer, but it's more like in a Saison farmhouse tripel uh, kind of range. It does have like a little bit of a spirit to it as well. Yeah, I'm thinking like like a white wine maybe. 
I don't want to say gin, but it has like that botanical, like floral aspect to it. But a lot of times the base Belgians can smell like that. Anyway, not much more I'm going to get out of this. The legs aren't as big as I thought, so I don't know about ABV, but we will see. Anyway, cheers, everybody. Thanks again to Steven. Okay, I will say this. If this is a tripel or something that has substantial alcohol, it's not hitting me as much as I would have thought. But there is a pretty big bitterness on the back that makes me think this is maybe dry hopped or, or like a hop forward. Because again, this is at least nine, probably 10 months old. Seems like it has a little bit of hop character and it's kind of died out a little bit. The body's pretty big, like higher side of medium, lower side of full. It's a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla. I don't, I don't really know what this is. This is crazy. Mouthfeel, it has that nice prickly carbonation you get from a Belgian beer, but it's really smooth and slightly creamy on the palate. So moderate carbonation, but really smooth and creamy. Could be an alcohol dryness on the back, could be that bitterness, could just be like a barrel aspect. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of lingering alcohol. And I think this might be not huge in ABV, but decent. One thing I'm really bad with when it comes to Belgian beers, I'll just be honest with you. This is what happened in the last one too. I guess 7.5 and it was 5.2 or something like that. I remember it was lower. It was like five, five and a half. I'm not great with Belgian just because I don't drink them a lot. But when it comes to those aforementioned Belgian styles of the lighter color, I always mess up the ABV by two to three percent. I just do. It's just something that I, it's tough for me to guess. This one, the body indicates is bigger. This is like higher side of me and lower side of full. Um, there was a decent alcohol legs on the glass or so it seems. And there is a little bit of warming into my chest. So I'm thinking this is like eight and a half, nine. That, that would be what my, I'd guess. The flavors though, honestly, the flavors, and this might just be the age, but this is where I have to kind of guess the, fla the flavors are very muted for like a Belgian-esque beer. They're... Forefront, there's like a little weedy, grainy component, passes through, a little bit of that apricot, pear. Back of the palate, the clove and the coriander, which are screaming in the nose, not really there. I'm getting a slight like bubblegum thing. Yeah, the, the phenols from the yeast are definitely giving you the clove and coriander, but they're not as big as the nose. And then the esters are providing the fruitiness and that little bubblegum. There is a dryness on the back, and I'm trying to figure out if I want to go with like a to me, this could be like a white wine barrel aged um, Belgian strong pale or maybe a Belgian Chappelle, but I don't know. It's either that or there, it's like a, it's like a dry hopped Belgian Chappelle or, or pale. I, do I want to say this? If there's anything a barrel is producing in here, it's a substantial dryness to me and maybe a touch of vanilla, but I'm not getting actual like wine characteristics or any kind of barrel. If this was like bourbon or whiskey, I'm not really getting anything that says that other than I'm getting the actual barrel itself as opposed to the spirit inside the barrel. Yeah, I mean, this is super easy drinking. I will say this, rating on this, on this beer right here, Oh, how do we do the, do we do the rating? I don't like, I don't, how do we do this? Cause I need to, I'm gonna do it at the end when I uh, open it up. But all right, let's sum this up. I think this is a higher ABV Belgian uh, beer of some kind. It could be a Belgian strong pale, could be a Belgian Chappelle. It might even be a, like a bigger Saison, something in that realm. I'm gonna lock in a Belgian style um, strong pale ale. I'm gonna say this is 9%. And I'll do one more and see if we'll lock in a barrel or not. I'll go white wine barrel age Belgian strong pale at 9%. I am, the confidence on this is about 25%. And I don't think, how many places are going to put a Belgian trial style strong pale or tripel or something in a can like this and having white wine barrels? Not, not that many. So I'm going to say I'm going to miss on the ABV by at least 2% either way. This could be 11 and a half or this, or sorry, 11, or this is going to be seven. 
and watch it not be barrel aged and dry hop. And then I want to kick myself in the, the lower half of my body. Oh yeah, rating before I reveal it. Um, I'll give this a low four, 3.9. I'm enjoying it, especially if it's a bigger beer. So let's see what this is. Looking straight ahead so I don't ruin it. I'll let you get a gander at the can first. What do we got? It's a dry, dry hopped weed ale. Okay, is it Belgian or just... 4.9%. Holy fuck, I, I, I killed the alcohol on that. This is... So, what did I tell you? It's going to be dry hopped or barrel aged. It's dry hopped. It's a weed ale, 4.9%. Is it just a weed ale? They don't say Belgian. I would say Belgian. I, what did I say at the beginning? It doesn't smell like a red beer. Yeah, I, I fucked this one up, and I'm cool with that. Um, I had a discussion recently with some uh, beer tubing friends, Kyle over at No Hype, uh, Matt over at Massive Beer Reviews, the Nerd Sense guys, FLX guys. And we talked about the best thing about whodunits and when you really do fail. And this is probably the worst I've done in a whodunit in a while. I'll give myself a little leeway, mostly because um, it's been a while. It's been over a year since I've done one myself. But um, I think the age played a role. There is no date on this. So Billy's Orange Daisy, it just says 4.9%. Dry hopped weed ale. So, yeah, I give this a 3.9. It's pretty good. Um, clearly, I missed on the ABV, and the legs I'm seeing is just a mirage. Yeah, I mean, to me, this the body on this is awesome. This is higher side of medium, lower side of light for 4.9%. Like, it has a thickness. It's not watery at all. And the mouthfeel is awesome. Best part about this beer is that, too. But, like I said, I kind of knew it was dry hopped or barrel aged. And I know that's like, what the hell? A lot of times, especially when beers are aged, a lot of times the dry hopping just fades away in terms of like the flavor characteristics. And a lot of times the bitterness just comes in or even just with like a hop forward weed ale. And that's what happened here where my mind was thinking to me like the dryness. And I said, it's just more barrel-esque than actual uh, spirit. So I'm fine with saying I failed on this one. And you know what? I'm happy about it. So I would give myself C minus, D plus, something like that. Definitely the worst I've done in a hot minute. Uh, if you look at some of my earlier whodunit beer reviews, like the first five to 10, I have, I really messed up a bunch of them. But yeah, I really fucked this one up quite a bit. So Fat Orange Cat, Dry Hopped Weed Ale, and it is their Billy's Orange Daisy. I have no issues, like I said, giving this a 3.9 out of five and... Steven, if you uh, know the price point on this one or the availability, let me know. We do get some Fat Orange Cat here, but not a lot. So um, I, I think it's pretty damn good overall. It's just not all that um, amazing. And I clearly thought it was a 9% barrel-aged uh, Belgian strong pal. So boop, I fucked it up. Anyway, if anybody has had this beer before, post in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. And yeah, we'll be back next week to see if I can do a better job this time around. Um, it's kind of weird going back to whodunit beer reviews after so long because I forget how tough it is to kind of sit there and try to lock in what you want. I wish I would have went like six and a half, seven, so I wouldn't have been so bad on ABV, but I totally just foobarred this one. I don't know if this is the worst I've done on ABVs. I think I've done maybe just as bad as this where it's like literally a 4% 4, 4 difference, but this is impressive from a body mouthfeel uh, standpoint, and that's really why I wanted to go high. I really wasn't getting a lot of alcohol. It was just the body mouthfeel for something just under 5%. This is phenomenal. So huge thanks, Stephen. Thanks, everybody, stopping by for another Who Done It? A beer review. Check back next week so I can mess up another one and we can all have a laugh at Joe from the Beer Patrol. Anyway, till the next one. Cheers.